So it turns out that we can also calculate the enthalpy change of a reaction uh, given information about other reactions that we can sort of use as place markers about where the enthalpy change or potential energy change of a reaction is going. Uh, this method is called Hess's Law and what we can do to start is we can actually um, use some tricks uh, to um, manipulate equations so that eventually we'll be able to build uh, an overall equation from a series of uh, related equations. Okay, we'll see that in a little bit. But uh, uh, to, before we get there, well, we do have to realize that um, if we uh, take a chemical equation, and what we'll do is we'll first use this one. So we got A plus 2B goes to C with an enthalpy change of plus 5 kilojoules. We can take that equation and multiply it by some factor, and all we have to do is uh, multiply the enthalpy by that factor as well. So what we can do is we can take this equation and we can multiply it by anything, an integer, a fraction, but let's just say we multiply it by 3. Okay. So now instead of having 1a plus 2b goes to c, we have 3a plus 6b goes to 3c. If we do that, all we have to do is multiply by the enthalpy by that same value. So now our delta H is plus 15 kilojoules, or 5 times 3. That should make sense since we know the enthalpy change is stoichiometric, meaning that if one mole, if it takes, well, for instance, let's say if it takes uh, 5 kilojoules to produce one mole of C, it would take 15 kilojoules to produce 3 moles of C, because it's 3 times the amount of material. If we reverse the reaction, all we have to do is change the sign of delta H, because really all we're doing is flipping uh, the final and initial potential energies. So if we flip this equation so that uh, instead of it being A plus 2B goes to C, we flip it so that C goes to A plus 2B, all we have to do is change the sign of enthalpy, so instead of being plus 5 kilojoules, it is now negative 5 kilojoules. Now we can use those two uh, steps to eventually build a series of reactions to produce an overall reaction. And uh, when we do that, we're going to need to add equations. So what we can do is we can sum overall equations, sum, uh, sum the series of steps to produce an overall equation, and all we have to do is sum those heats of reactions. Here's, what, here's an example about that. So let's say we take our A plus 2B goes to C. And its delta H is plus 5 kilojoules. We can add it to another equation like, say, C goes to 2D. And let's say that has an enthalpy change of negative 8 kilojoules. Turns out we can add those reactions, add those chemical equations, to produce an overall equation whose enthalpy change is just the sum of the individual enthalpy changes. So how do we add uh, chemical equations? Well, if anything's on the same side, if something's on the reactants, we would add those. If something's on the same side, uh, say the products, we would add those. If a molecule or anything is on both sides of the equation, they actually cancel each other out. And that should make sense if we make one mole of C and then we use up one mole of C in the next step, well, we don't have any C left over at the end of the day. And so it won't end up in our overall equation. So A plus 2B are only two reactants. And that makes 2D our only product left. And so without really ever going into the lab to do the overall equation, we could figure out its enthalpy change by adding these. So plus 5 and a negative 8 would be negative 3 kilojoules um, using uh, that sum. Okay? So this is uh, shown pictorially here on this uh, plot from your uh, book. So we know if we had the potential energy of A plus 2B is here, and then we go up, to C, we make C, and then it's down here. If C goes to 2D, and that uh, difference in potential energy, I get negative 8, so it went down in potential energy by 8 kilojoules. Here it went up by 5 
kilojoules. We know the difference in potential energy or the difference in enthalpy change by the addition or the sum of those two values. So this would be negative three kilojoules. And so we would know the enthalpy change between 2D and A plus 2B without ever really having to go in the lab and do it. This uh, approach to determining uh, enthalpy change is known as Hess's Law. All right. And so let's apply that to an actual example, like example 6.9. So here we're going to find the enthalpy change for this reaction, 3C, three, 3 carbons plus 4 hydrogens produce 1 mole of propane. We're going to determine its enthalpy change. We're going to do that using these three reactions. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through this list and find uh, our carbon, our hydrogen, and our propane from these three uh, reactions and build them so that we get the overall reaction we're looking for. So first let's go after carbon. I know I need three moles of carbon. So let's look through car these reactions and find some carbon. Here we go. There's carbon. It's a reactant, which I wanted as a reactant, but there's only one mole of carbon in that equation. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to take it and I'm going to need to multiply by 3 so that I have 3 moles of carbon, which is what I want. So we're going to multiply 3 by that whole equation. So now I've got 3 moles of carbon plus 3 moles of oxygen produces 3 moles of CO2. Now it's enthalpy change. We'll have to record that. And its enthalpy change was negative 393.5. But when I use it down here, I'm going to have to multiply it by 3. So we're going to take negative 393.5 and multiply it by 3. And we get 1181. Negative 1181. All right, so now I know I've got my carbon. So now let's uh, figure out how we're going to get some hydrogen and four moles of hydrogen is that. So I look for hydrogen in my equation. Okay, I don't see it until the third equation, but there it is. So hydrogen is a reactant, which, which is what I want, but there's only two moles of hydrogen. I know I need four. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that equation and I'm going to multiply it by two. So now I've got four moles of hydrogen plus two moles of oxygen produces four moles of water. That will give me the four moles of hydrogen that I need. <coughs> and now, I'll need to figure out what the enthalpy is. I'm going to take this enthalpy and multiply it by four because that's what I did for my equation. So I'm going to take negative 43.6 and multiply it by two. And I get negative 967.2. All right, almost done with this problem. Now I need to find propane. I've got propane here in my first equation, and it's also the correct number of moles. I need one mole of propane. I have one mole of propane. But in the equation that I'm going to use, it's the reactant. For my overall equation, it's a product. So I need to flip it. So I'm going to take this equation and I'm going to flip it. So that now I've got 3 moles of CO2 plus 4 moles of water produce 1 mole of propane and 5 moles of oxygen. Then I need to think about what's going to happen to my enthalpy. I'm going to take this enthalpy and use it, but now I need to change the sign since I flipped the equation. So that negative 2043 becomes a 20, positive 2043 kilojoules. Now it, I can add my equations. And if my equations add up to equal my overall equation, I can add up the enthalpy change and that's the enthalpy change for my overall reaction. Alright, so let's go through it. 
On the reactant side, I have three moles of carbon, and that's all I have. There's three moles of carbon. I also have three moles of oxygen and two moles of oxygen in the next equation. So that's five moles of oxygen uh, on the reactant side. Now those would add to be some of my reactants for my overall equations if I didn't notice that on the other side I also have five moles of oxygen. So I have five moles of oxygen on both the reactant side and the product side. So guess what? They're going to cancel out. Anything that's on both sides of the equation, the reactants and products, will cancel each other out when you add them up. My first product of this equation is of the product of my first equation is three moles of CO2, but I also have three moles of CO2 as a reactant in the third equation. So the three moles of CO2 also cancel out. In the second equation, I've got four moles of hydrogen, and it looks like they're going to stay. I don't have any hydrogen elsewhere. And they're going to produce four moles of water if those four moles of water in the third equation didn't cancel it out. And then finally, the only thing left I have in my third equation is my one mole of propane. And so that is the overall equation that I have. If you notice, that matches up with my overall equation that I wanted in this example perfectly. So now, all I have to do is add up all of these enthalpy changes. So I'm going to take 1181, negative 1181 for my first equation, plus a negative 967.2, plus a positive 2043. When I do that, I get a negative 105.2. So that is the enthalpy change for the reaction of three carbons plus four hydrogens produces one mole of propane, determined using Hess's law.